Hi folks, this one starts a series of videos talking about the basics of stop motion animation. The first thing I want to talk about is frame rate. I mean, how many frames we have for each second of time. Frame rate is fundamental in animation because we measure in frames. So before we start talking about how many frames we need to perform a jump, we must decide first our frame rate. As you may know, cinema works under two laws. The persistence of vision, saying that each image we see stays for a fraction of time in our routine. So it blends with the next image, and this makes possible the illusion of movement, or the cinema, where we play a sequence of still images. And the second one, saying that we are able to perceive around 10 to 12 individual images per second. Meaning that under 12 frames per second, we will notice the jump between frames. So if you want to make a fluid animation, you must work at least with 12 frames per second. With that in mind, frame rate has been set over the time according to the technology used to play the movies. First projectors used for silent films worked at 16 frames per second. When the sun appeared, cinema standard moved to 24 frames per second. With the TV, frame rate changed to 30 frames per second in USA and 25 in Europe. And moving to the digital era, today, some movies and video games are displayed at 60 frames per second or 120. Filmmaker IQ has an awesome video about that, so if you want to know more, check it later. You'll have the link in the description. Focusing in animation, the best frame rate base is a cinema standard, 24 frames per second. The reason being is that 24 is a number divisible by 2, 3 and 4 getting whole numbers like 12, 8 and 6. So we keep our frames true, because we don't want to play a fraction of frame. Animation takes a lot of time to make, meaning it's expensive. That's why the use of double frames is super important and it has its own name. Working in a 24 frames per second sequence, if we animate all the frames, we are animating at once. If we want to reduce the work and we take two pictures for each pose, or we duplicate each picture, we will be animating at twos. This also works with threes and fours, meaning we repeat three or four times every frame. Normally, TV series are animated at twos and cinema movies at once. Let me show you how it works in Dragon Frame to take ones and twos. As you can see, I have my teddy bear on screen and the camera is live so I can move my teddy bear and start animating. For once it's easy, you just shoot a frame and that's it. For twos, threes and fours you have multiple options. The first one and the easiest one is just taking as much pictures as you need, so for twos you take two pictures. The second option is that you can pull the frame from the corner, so it appears a yellow arrow. If you pull this, this arrow you can create twos threes, fours and whatever number you want to duplicate that frame. The third option is useful if you want to make a lot of twos for example. So you, you have to enable the virtual holes and then if you shoot using the short key you will create twos every time with a single shot. The last option is just in case you need to change a lot of frames or an entire take. You go to the X sheet, you select all the frames you want and then you just change the frames to twos, threes or whatever you need. But the real magic of working at 24 frames per second is that you can mix ones and twos all the time.
Now that we know the rules or the industry standard, we can break it. I mean, we work with a sequence of images. If we are not in synchro with any sound, we can accelerate or decelerate the sequence by changing the frame rate. It's not ideal, but if it makes better animation, better timing, why not to do it? My recommendation if you are starting to learn stop motion now is to shoot at 12 frames per second. That way all the frames that you are working with are originals instead of one original and one copy. That makes a lot easier to animate. And then you can move to 24. One last thing. You probably have perceived some kind of strobing effect on the bears moving sideways, even at 24 frames per second. The reason being is that stop motion is made of still images, and motion blur is not happening. If we shoot any live action video, all the moving parts will appear blur, and that's not happening in stop motion. 